Hello, I'm Richard Murphy, and I want to talk about another major theme in economics which a lot of people don't understand. And when I say a lot of people, I mean many economists and almost every politician. And that is the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. Now, if you're a pedant, you'll say it's one letter. Drop the I, add the A, and you've got the difference between the two. But that difference is really important. Microeconomics is what most economists do. And it's about the economics of you or me or our families or businesses. It's about the small, hence micro. We are small in proportion to the country as a whole. And the country as a whole is macroeconomics. Now, why does this difference matter? Surely, we just are gonna get bigger and bigger, but the economics doesn't change. Yes, it does. It changes fundamentally between micro and macro. I want to give you a very simple example. In microeconomics, it's possible to save money by not spending. Let's think about the coronavirus crisis that many of us have lived through. During the time that we were in lockdown, we couldn't go to the pub. When we couldn't go to the pub, we didn't buy beer. As a result, a lot of us saved money. Households in the UK had an exceptional saving rate during the period that we were locked down. But businesses in the UK lost a fortune. That didn't matter to most households. Actually, most households have come out of coronavirus in a better financial state than they were before it started because they've been able to repay some of their debts or save. But businesses are in a complete mess. And that's because there's a boundary between the two entities. In microeconomics, each person we look at, whether it's a person, a family, a company, or whatever else, are separate one from the other. Now, when we come to macroeconomics, the pi picture is totally different. Because if I didn't go to the pub and buy a pint, and I have done that on occasions, I have to tell you, then in macroeconomics, my failure to spend has the implication of cutting somebody else's income. And that somebody else is still in the same country. The units got so big that when I don't spend, the country loses out. So I can't get rid of a cost or solve a problem by stopping spending. Now, this has massive implications in economics because for the last 10 years, the government has run the country as if it's a microeconomic unit. It's tried to cut spending to save cost. It's done austerity. But that doesn't work in macroeconomics because in macroeconomics, when you cut a cost, you cut someone else's income and they're still within your country. And so actually what you do is cut cost, but you also cut income and you don't improve your position, except that everybody's a bit worse off because you didn't have a pint and that somebody's got no money to spend. Whereas in the micro economy, you can be better off by cutting your spending in the macro economy, you can't. In the macro economy, the only way you can clear your debts is by growing your income. Now, of course, you can do that in the microeconomy as well. It's another way to pay off your debt is make more money. But in the macroeconomy, it's the only way you can do it. So they're not the same at all. And unless you understand that, you can't get a lot of economics and you can't understand a lot of government economic policy and why so much of it has for so long been wrong. This is an issue we're going to explore further. I'm Richard Murphy. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. We will be coming back to this theme. I hope you're interested in it. Follow me on Twitter, at Richard J. Murphy. Follow me on my blog, Tax Research UK. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.